Ahoy people, please don't forget to give this video a like if you like it. Also, make sure you sub to the channel by clicking the icon in the bottom right hand corner. And then when you sub to the channel, make sure you have your push notifications turned on, that little bell symbol, so that you're alerted anytime we put a new video on our channel. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Ahoy people, Vandiverse and the Vandiverse Gaming Channel here with part two of my new player guide series. Um, I got a ton of feedback on the previous video. I never expected it to do so well So thank you all for watching my video subbing to my channel and giving us a like um, Basically because of all the comments I received about the game and what to do next and just everything I decided to just make this into a series instead of a standalone video and Hopefully we can continue on all the way through the end game and I can give you guys some pretty good tips and tricks on what to do um, along the way as we play through these I will try and answer a lot of the questions that I received in the comments So please continue to leave your comments below I will answer your comment on the channel itself under the video But then I can also go into more depth on in the game to maybe give you guys some examples as well So with that being said, let's kind of get started here. So in the last video I basically just showed a quick 30 minute video of you know how to start off what to do and so a lot of people ask, you know, what do you do after this? Like every video out there for beginner ends right here. And there's a lot of information that they wanted to learn. So let's kind of start with the main goal of Conan Exiles and explain kind of what that is. So in Conan Exiles, it's a survival MMO. So similar to a game like Rust, etc., there are different tiers of building. And the whole goal is to build the biggest, strongest building tier and to protect yourself against other players and in this case the purge which is a pve version of a raid where you'll see this purge meter down here once it gets up to this little line here waves of npcs will attack your base and try and destroy it so even on a pve server you still want to build a base and secure it get thralls for it and protect it and that's kind of the ultimate goal of the game um, then on like a pvp server not only do you want to build and protect your base, you then want to build actual god altars where you can summon gods, you can build catapults, you can build bombs, and then you want to go and you want to raid other people's buildings and steal their stuff, as well as fight each other as you see them out in the open. Um, to do that, you have to level up in this game. This game is based on an unlocking feature, just like an MMO would be, where as you level up, instead of unlocking skills, you unlock different feats that allow you to craft certain materials. And each material that you can craft requires you to harvest something. And all those, all those harvestable resources are all over the world in different locations. So what I'd like to focus on in this video, episode two, is basically just show you guys two important things. One, how to level your character. Some of the tips that I've seen and used that people talk about on leveling quickly. And then number two, where to build your base. So I built this base here just because I thought I'd do a quick beginner's guide. But if we're gonna be frank and it's something where if I was playing the game, I wouldn't build here. It's far away from a lot of the resources we need. And so my favorite building location is right in this area, anywhere around here, because you're very close to thrall camps, like right here and right here. You're very co close to the frozen north, which is kind of the end game area where the, a lot of stuff, um, materials are that you might not get elsewhere. And it just seems to be, in my opinion, very close to a lot of iron, which is a very important resource in this game. You still have water. So I like to build in this area over here, um, just personal preference. So that's what I'd like to show you guys. There's really two different philosophies in this game. A is you go, you lay down your roots somewhere and you put down building foundations and you secure some land and you start building and you try and basically hit level 20 because level 20 is when you can open the second tier of building materials and then you build a tier two base and from there you just fortify it. Uh, the other philosophy is why don't you just level up, level past all that stuff, don't really put any roots down and just spend majority of the early part of your game leveling. So in this video I wanna kinda of do both. I wanna show you ways to level and how leveling works when it comes to what you should unlock and why 
And then at the same time, I think we're going to head towards this area and establish a little bit better base location. And then if you guys sub to the channel, in the next video, we'll talk about building the machines and showing you guys how, what resources you put into what machines, what order you build the machines in, etc., so that you can start fortifying your base. So with all that being said, let's get started here. Um, so I believe I'm like level 12, and if you look under the attributes here, like I said, I put everything in encumbrance. It's solely my preference. There's a lot of stuff you can build in early on. But encumbrance just seems like the right thing to do, especially if you're going to be building a base. If you're wandering around exploring, you might not want to do this. It's completely up to you, but I just for some reason like encumbrance. And then under feats, let's kind of talk about feats. So the things that I would unlock, um, until you like have a base location, beds is not that important. Uh, bow is really not worth it. They're kind of underpowered right now. They don't really have a lot of advantages. You know, if you hit end game and you spec completely into bow, they do some pretty nasty damage. But early on, it's kind of pointless. I'm going to unlock it just because I believe that it's a, a journey, which helps for leveling. Um, shields are good, again, for the journey for blocking. Um... Daggers are probably the most important weapon you're going to want to unlock, especially for fighting uh, mobs and NPCs because of the bleed damage, which is out of control. And then here, if you're on a PvP server, I would suggest unlocking this to make a stone pike. If you're on a PvE server, you don't really need a stone pike, but in PvP, the stone pikes, the basically the big spears, are pretty overpowered right now. And then we will eventually get into unlocking the blacksmith, which gives us our furnace and our blacksmith bench, the carpenter bench, our upgraded tools. So this allows us to make the second tier of tools. And basically a second tier of tools just lets you harvest more at a time per each swing. And then the tanner bench, this actually is good because it makes a byproduct that's actually very needed, both leather and the um, tar that comes out of it. And then eventually we'll end up doing our Wheel of Pain so that we can break some thralls, which will probably be in the fourth video. So first video was what it was. Second video, leveling and finding a better build location more closer to resources. Third video is going to be building. And then the fourth video will be capturing for thralls. So that's pretty much the feats. And so now, most important thing we want to do is we want to build ourselves our daggers. Craft. And we should probably get ourselves a stone spear if we're on a PvP server. Other than that, I think we're good. We do need to go fill our water skin. Um, we'll put our stone daggers here. We will build a shield just to get the block. I believe that's one of my journeys, which is important for leveling. And we'll keep that on our bar. We got plenty of food here. Let's do this. And then move this here, move this here. Okay. So I think we're good. Um, if you don't know how to sort, you just come up here, you hit name, and it actually sorts it. You can sort it by heaviest sort. You can uncheck or highlight certain things. So sort by housing, sort by consumables, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So just an option there. All right. So we have our pike, we have our daggers. We need to go get some water and head our direction now some of the comments that i received on my channel one of them was the combat mechanics and how the combat works and so i'm going to kind of demonstrate that here with some of these kappas and then also we might fight an npc camp so we'll do that here in a second and then i did get a lot of questions about the wooden box and when to hide it and do you always put your stuff in it which we'll cover here after I fight this Kappa. So the great thing about daggers is the heavy attack does a bleed. And as soon as you do a bleed, you can actually back out of a lot of their attacks. So now he's bleeding and then I can just go back. Now you can also hit your F key, which would be a kick or a block. But when you have daggers, it's actually a backwards card. So I kind of blew my stamina because I wasn't paying attention. But once you get it back, and he's, he's going to die, but then you can use your regular attack and dive forward like this. So just some mechanics to work on when you're fighting um, NPC, like animals, kappa, stuff like that. Use your heavy, which is your right click. Get a combo in, bleed them, 
and then either use your F key and do a flip backwards like this, or just do your um, your rollback like this. Um, so now we'll show you how that kind of works on players. Now when you're not players, but NPC thralls. If there's an archer, you always want to focus the archer first. We'll fight one and I'll kind of show you the strat there. But if it's just a fighter, it's pretty same same strategy. Once you get your combo in, back out. Well, this guy's stuck, so we're fine. Never mind. He was stuck on the fireplace. Not a big deal. Also, you do want to harvest these guys. They give you hide. They give you human flesh, which can be turned into food. And sometimes they give you bone. Um, oh, there we go. Little newbies. He's dead, so we'll just back out of there. He's dead. And... He's dead. So you can see a full heavy combo with my daggers. Bleeds them out, and they pretty much die. All right, so let's keep making our way over this way. We're going to get some water. So the goal is to kind of cut through the middle here and hopefully not die on our way to, to do our building. The reason why we want to build in these areas over here is just because it's around more of the resources we're going to need later on in the game. Um, back to what I was talking about, the wooden boxes. Some of the questions I got regarding wooden boxes was... Do you always have to put your stuff in the bottom of the box every time you leave your house? And the answer is no. So on a PvE server especially, there's no reason to have a hidden loot room because no one can destroy your buildings anyways. Um, on a PvP server, there's a raid window time. So basically during a certain period of time, people can do damage to your building. And I would suggest that if you're going to be online um, during that time, that, or I'm sorry, offline and not available to protect your building, I would suggest putting all your stuff in that little hidden loot room. Just the stuff you don't want to get rid of. Like putting stone and wood and stuff in there is pointless. It's just mainly for the things that you spend a lot of time crafting, and if you were to lose them, it would set you back. And then the other thing is just be careful on a PvP server. Um, I do know that in the past people could train animals onto your base because they weren't people and then they would just stand on the top of your base and basically the animal like the rhino or elephant would just literally destroy your base in seconds. And so just be careful on that. Oh, we got an alligator. So you fight the alligator the same way you fight everything else. You bleed it, you move away. And then you get out of the way. I like the uh, effects during nighttime, so then he's dead. Alright, cool. Hack him up. Okay. Yeah, so back to the wooden boxes, that's pretty much that. If you have any more comments, just leave them below and we'll kind of cover them. Um, so, yeah, so let's keep heading this direction. To repair, you just basically click on the item. As long as you have the material to repair, you click repair and it will repair and you're good to go there. I would suggest not putting raw food on your bar. You might accidentally click the number five and then if you do, you're going to basically eat raw food and poison yourself. You also notice I just came in here and then hit my button six and it actually fills my water skin. Um, that's how you fill the water skin, you just put it on your bar and then you click it there. Scout a Defari camp. So you can see that as I'm scouting all these camps, I'm leveling up. That's kind of the key to leveling in this game, which is what I want to discuss, is doing your journey is a very, very quick way to level up. Uh, I logged on. I was 12. I'm already halfway through 13. I still got to do a block. I still got to do a torch and equip a piece of light armor. Now, you'll be able to make light armor on an armorer's bench, when you get your armor's bench set up, but a lot of these thrall camps will actually drop pieces of gear and other things, so you can also get it from doing that as well. Looks like he's fighting a croc here. Um, so first thing I wanna do is I wanna make a torch quick so that I can get that feat, and then what we'll do is we will put our sword and shield on, and then we can do our block to get that journey. Now watch my experience when I do these journeys. It's out of control. 
So block, when you have a shield on, is the same as what your kick and your jump back is without a shield. So here we go. Okay, so now we're going to block this chick. Come on. Hey, you -hoo. Hit me. Hit me. There you go. So you notice she has a block on right now. So if I attack her and she's holding block, we can't get by it. So this is where kick comes in. So basically, you just swip, uh, switch weapons here. Uh, you just put on your attack without a sword, and then you kick. Now her, she can't block a kick. And then if she drops her block, or you can break through her shield. If you kick her enough, and you do enough damage to the shield, the shield will break. Oops. And she's dead. So part of the combat mechanics, which is something that someone asked me, is what do you do? If you have just a sword, no shield, you can kick. That's how you break block. Um, if you use a shield, then you also can hold down block. Um, if you don't have a shield, if you have daggers on, you actually do a backflip. And I believe that's pretty much it. Kick, backflip, backflip, and block are the three that you have depending on what you got on you. All right, so let's see what this gal has. So you see that this gal is a Defari Cook number one. That is actually a thrall that you can break on your thrall wheel and put onto your cooking fire, or your um, you'll get a fire cauldron here in the future, and it will actually help lower the time that it takes to um, cook something and also lower the materials that it takes or resources that it takes. So there's cooks, there's smelters, there's all sorts of things which we'll get into into the thrall video uh, a little bit on in the future. All right, so use a torch. We still got to use a torch, so let's do that. So I just gained another level. So I'm level 14 because of all the journey that I have, that I just unlocked uh, with just those couple things there. So I already gained two levels, and it's only been a couple minutes here. So that's how important doing the journey is. The other thing is, is un you unlock by locating uh, different things on the map. Certain map points give you better experience than others, but just know that the map updating or finding stuff on the map is cumulative. So if you for the first 10 might not give you a lot, but then the next 10, when you have 20 unlocked, might give you more. And then by the time you get to 50 or 60 of them unlocked, the more you get more and more XP, the more you explore. So the game is trying very hard to have you follow the journey and also to have you explore the map and try and unlock um, the different areas so that you can level up quicker. Especially on a 1x server. When you only have one times or two times the experience, it's going to be very hard to level up. Um, so this is a good way to do that is by exploring killing mobs, killing uh, NPCs, and doing your journey. All right, we got some hyenas here. Whoops. So wait for them to do their attack, then do my attack. So hyenas will cripple you usually if they attack, depending, and they slow you with cripple, which is a real pain in the butt. So just be careful. When you're crippled, you can't you can't move. Um, some things will bleed you. Uh, some things will sunder you, which lowers your armor. Um, there's a lot of different abilities like that, which we'll get into in more of the combat mechanics here. All right, we're running out of time, so let's repair this. Uh, and hopefully, so early on, your first goal really, if you have like if you're a goal-oriented person and you want to say okay. I just started the game, what is my first goal? So your first goal really is to find a good building location and then to hit level 20. Because once you can build um, tier two stuff, you're pretty safe. The amount of damage a tier two um, building can take versus a stone building, a tier one, is substantially different. So once you get to tier two, I mean, even if people are raiding, it's gonna take them a lot of time to raid your base, which We'll kind of get into that in the next episode on what you should do to kind of build your base, where to build it, um, you know, different tips and tricks for people who have never played a survival game 
um, things called like airlocks, stuff like that. Alright. What did I have here? This? Alright, who wants a piece? Who wants a piece? You want a piece, big man? Come get some. Whoa. Oh my goodness. So, that was terrible. Alright, don't do that jump thing again. Does he seem bigger than the other ones? This guy seems different. Ouch. Yeah, he's definitely different. But he's dead anyways. Alright. So, we'll keep eating, you know, cooked food. It gives you that regen component on it. Every time I click it, I regen a little bit. So, you'll notice that I'll constantly click it. And same goes for these little handful of insects. It's really nice to just like loot a couple handful of insects and then just click them little by little as you're running and you regen. They did change it where if you take damage you stop regening and there is no uh, like straight up heals. Everything's a heal over time. So just know that everything is a regen regardless if it's a, a potion or a bandage or food and it can be easily interrupted uh, as soon as you take damage. So since we're here, we're kind of in this area, I'll show you the Yog Trainer. So if you watched my first video, you would have noticed that I mentioned that there are certain trainers that can teach you dirt, certain religions for free, and so you don't have to waste points. And so this is one of them. This is the Yog Trainer. It's called Shaman's Rise. Basically, you just come up here, you talk to this fella. He'll teach you a nifty little emote as well. Click on him. His name's Nunu the Cannibal. Learn emote cheer and then learn religion acolyte of Yog. So now that I learned the religion acolyte of Yog, if I go to my feats window, you will see that not only do I have Ymir for free, I have Yog for free now. Where if you look at the pleasure palace of Durketo and Set and Mitra, it's going to require 50 points for me to unlock these, even though they're level 1 where these other ones only they don't cost me 50 points they're already a lock because they're green so there you go so now we can do yog and we can use emir and i believe i'm almost level 15 already so from when i first started the the game to building that little house i got to level 10 and then i'm sorry level 12 and then just in these couple minutes i've already gotten three levels so you can see how doing the journey and killing monsters and unlocking map is the best way to level. Just sitting still and you know farming for building is just not gonna get you there. Okay, I thought these guys were gonna come, but they're not. This guy will though. See that cripple right there? So that's gonna slow me pretty pretty good. So there's different weapons that actually you can cripple with as well, which is really nice. Oh, there he is. And he's dead. Alright. So we need another piece of food. And so we're almost to where we need to be. We're just going to follow this around. And then we're going to get around this area. And this is where we're going to build our base. And then we're going to call it a day. So the goal is to get as high level as I can by the time I get up there so that by the next video I can show you how we're going to build. And by the way, I'm giving up my, uh, my favorite build spot. So anybody who gets on this game and takes this build spot on my server will be very upset. This is actually a really good build spot right there too, just FYI. You build up on top there, on that little ledge there. If you build a small base, no one will even know you're up there. Alright, so now we got a little bit of a ways here. So I discussed kind of some of the combat mechanics. I showed those off. I talked about the wooden chest that somebody asked me about. Um, am I going to make videos on the series? Yes. Uh, so someone did ask me about the crafting benches and stuff. So like right here, they said, hey, I can't find the blacksmith bench. And so it's actually under this blacksmith. There's your furnace. There's your blacksmith bench. Uh trying to think of what else people had oh uh, feats and attributes so under feats people said hey why can't I unlock it so you see that these have a lock on them 
The reason why you can't unlock this is because you have to be level 15. But you'll see these that are red, but they don't have a lock. That just means there's a prerequisite to unlocking it. So right here, I can't unlock this because I haven't unlocked torch. But if I click on torch, it'll show me, oh, right there, that's what I need to unlock in order to unlock this. So if you have something that's red, but doesn't have a little lock beside it, you're the level required to make it. You just don't have the prerequisite unlocked for it. If it has a little lock, you're just not high enough. All right. Need me some more bugs. Handfuls of bugs. Such a great part of this game. All right, so this next little stretch of area is pretty, um, pretty boring. So you notice I did just level there because I found the unnamed city. The unnamed city is this giant area here. Uh, it has corruption in it, which is a nasty, nasty thing in this game. Corruption is basically a poison to your body that is permanent through death. So basically, when you have corruption on you, even if you die, you will still have it. The only way to remove corruption is to find a dancer thrall and to knock them out, drag them to your wheel of pain, break them, and then put them in your base somewhere. And then if you stand next to them, not only will they give you a regen buff, they will also um, remove all your corruption. There is also another area, which is the city over here. The city over here is an NPC city now. It is a friendly city, and there happens to be a room in there where there are dancers, where if you don't have the ability to unlock your dancers and you have corruption, you can just go over that little city, head into the bar, and have a drink with somebody who's super famous and who this game is built on. Uh, not to say any names, and I'm not going to tell you where it is. You have to find him because I don't want to spoil it. Um, but you can he's in there with those dancer thralls as well. All right, so we're almost going up the hill to where we need to be. Uh, the mobs over here are going to get a little bit higher, uh, so just we'll keep an eye out for that. But another croc, easy peasy. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, see, so I tried to do my combo, and I didn't get out in time. Whoa, now there's two. All right, so here we go. If there's two, you're going to have a hard time. If you don't get out, they're going to attack you before you get your combo off, so make your combo less. And you only get the bleed effect by doing heavy attacks. Oh, this is not going well for me. Now we're down to one. Right. So as long as you keep doing damage, you're going to keep stuttering him, so he's not going to get to do his combo on you. If you don't do damage, it gives them an opportunity to then stutter, to then start their combo. Um, so that's a lot to do with this game, is waiting for combos to finish, rolling out of combos, repositioning around combos, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, these flowers here, these yellow flowers, these are going to be used in order to craft potions that will allow you to reset both your attributes and your feats. And so just understand that if you put a lot of points into something and you're not quite sure, you know, oh, should I have done that? Um, then you can always reset it down the road. Same with like your your feats. I'm sorry, your attributes. So say I'm putting all this stuff in encumbrance and then down the road, I don't want to be encumbered anymore. I don't want to do any more gathering. Um, then I can easily uh, create these potions and then switch over my attributes and stuff. This is coal right here. Coal is a fuel. It's one. Of, it's the best fuel in the game. So certain machines require fuel to use, and you can use stuff as like plant fiber. You can use branches. You can use wood. But coal is the most beneficial um, burning material. It burns longer and more efficiently. Uh, these little gray things here are iron. These are pretty much the reason why we're out here. Is iron is what you're going to be farming a lot. And the further north you go, right above this like water area here, like if pretty much right in the middle of this map is where all the iron starts. And then as you head further north, there's just tons and tons of it. All right. Someone did ask, what is the levels of the different areas? Because in my first video, I talked about tier one, tier two, and tier three. I want to rephrase. Um, you can go anywhere in this game 
at any level. The tier one, tier two, tier three is more referring to the purge. The purge can destroy any type of base depending on where you are, but if you're down in this area here and you have a tier one base, you're going to withstand the purge fine. If you're in this area here and have a tier one base, your your base is going to be destroyed. The only way you're going to withstand in here is have a tier two or tier three base. <coughs> and then up in here, you got to have tier three material for a purge or your base is going to get destroyed. Now, when it comes to levels of monsters, yes, these are going to be easier. As you move up here, you're going to fight things that are harder. Um, like when you get up into this area, you're going to fight different hyenas. You're going to notice that the hyenas have like these stripes on them. They look a little bit different, um, so they're a little bit harder, but not much. I mean, a hyena is a hyena is a hyena. Um, up here, you're going to start getting into spite. Oh, boy. Maybe I spoke too soon. Oh, boy. Oh, God. This is not good, and I didn't lay a bed. Come on, get out of there. Ooh, come on, die. Die, people, die. Oh, God. I'm going to die. Oh, whew. That was close. Um, yeah. So, as I said, when you get up into these higher areas, you're going to fight different types of monsters, and some are going to be harder. Like, you're going to run into rhinos. You're going to run into elephants. You're going to run into stuff that you just don't even want to try to fight by yourself when you get up further here. And then, like, right here, that skeleton guy, he is not someone you want to mess with. They are very high level and will mess up your face pretty quickly. So, but the good thing about Canon Exiles is you can pretty much run away from anything in the game. Um, you know, even if you don't have stamina, you can still walk fast enough to outrun things, which to me is broken. I think it's a, a design flaw. I really think that you shouldn't be able to just walk away from stuff. I think you should be able to sprint, but not just like walk. Did I hear a hyena? So now you can see why I came in this area. Right there is iron. Right there is iron. Um, down there is more iron and spiders. And so that is why we're here, is the fact that there is way more iron resources up in this area. And we're just going to my favorite base location solely because I just like it. Alright. Alright, we're almost there. Almost there. So currently we have equip a piece of light armor, obtain an iron bar, use a skinning dagger to skin an animal. Those are our three journey steps right now. Now, you have other journey steps if you click on J. Like you have venerate the gods, shoot an enemy, um, equip a piece of light armor there, and then some of these you don't know yet, you have it unlocked. Um, as you level up, I believe they actually unlock what they do as you get through the chapters. Um, so like right now, which way are we going? Where are we? We're going this way. This is the way we're going. Yep. Yeah, so see how chapter 1 and 2 are unlocked, and now I can see everything for chapter 3. Once I clear chapter 3, it should show me everything for chapter 4. So we pretty much have gotten to our final destination. Um, hopefully this video was helpful to you all. You can see that I'm already level 15, almost 16. So just in the short time that we've been playing, I've already gained four levels. Obviously, as you um, get higher level, you'll gain less and less levels quickly. But the best way to level up in this game is to kill NPCs, explore the map, and complete your journey quest. Now, here is where I like to build my base, is on this bridge uh, over here underneath this little tower. So what I like about this bridge is you can literally wall this off, and you can literally wall this off, and then to try and climb up on this bridge is gonna be pretty darn difficult. And so that's why I like to build here. It is a pain because you have to run all the way up the stairs to get here. Um, but we'll show you that in the next episode of why I build here, why I like it, 
and kind of explains some of the um, mechanics to PvP and raiding and all of that good stuff. So, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, please leave a comment if you have any comments below. Please give this video a nice like if you like it. And then, of course, sub to the channel to not only participate in the giveaway, which I posted a little bit earlier, but to also check out my next video, which will be all about building and the machines and what you need to farm, etc. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Cheers. Peace out.